it seems like only yesterday we were here for Super Bowl 52 and now back for the road to the Super Bowl here in the Twin Cities at U.S. Bank Stadium. Tonight we continue with Wild Card Weekend with what should be a great one between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Minnesota Vikings. Win or go home is the mantra and off we go. We're underway in this NFC Wild Card game. Taken in the end zone and he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. takes it across the 40-yard line. The catch and run there, good for 16 and a first. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, he just stuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They'll run for the first time with Clyde edwards alaire And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. A gain of 13. It's a first down. But well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Right back to Edwards Alaire on first down. And just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Next to receivers, they'll spread the defense out, and they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. They go backwards there in two yards, and second and one is now third and three. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucs have a first down. And that's something you have to get ready for defensively because in today's NFL, teams will use their wide receivers on jet sweeps, end arounds. They'll move them back in the backfield and make them running backs. Partner, this was much more of a tap pass, but effective nonetheless. And I think both guys love it. If you're a quarterback, it's an easy completion. If you're a wide receiver, you get the easy reception and also a chance to try to make a play with your feet. They'll run. It's Edwards Alaire. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. The last run got six. Now second and four. Get it here 
it to the 10 yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. The impressive opening drive continues, and just space being created by those guys up front. We're seeing this the same way, aren't we? We are seeing an offensive line as this game gets started, as it starts to unfold, that they are dominating the line of scrimmage. Now Edwards Alaire. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come up and he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Bucs take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. So much for being intimidated on the road in the playoffs, right? That was a pretty clinical drive right there. Yeah, they seem to come out with the attitude of, we don't deal with pressure. We create it on the other team. Just took it right down the field and stuffed it in the end zone. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Throwing here on first down. Looks for White, right, but it's intercepted. Picked off at the 28. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house from Buccaneer TD. And we'll see if that pick six looms large as this game continues because we've seen plays like that alter a lot of playoff contests over the years. I would agree with that totally. And you often think to yourself, why do they alter it so much? Because after games, don't we hear coaches and players say, well, one play doesn't usually determine the outcome. But I don't think that's really true, do you? Because there's times when we see plays like that and all of a sudden the momentum jumps to that team side. It deflates the other side and they never pick it back up. And then things really go from there, don't they? That's the thing for me. We talk about momentum changes. A play like that is the ultimate momentum change. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And fresh off the pick six. They've got to forget about that quickly. In this case now, the guy throwing the ball, He's got to be like what we talk about with defensive backs who get beat for a long touchdown. Short-term memory, right back out there doing the things that he does best and knowing that taking care of the ball is paramount. Here's his opportunity. Oh, it comes back to those defensive backs for the formal D, former DB, right? I, I don't know where that comes from. It yeah. just kind of emerges out of me for some it's reason. deep in there, right? <laughs> two interceptions. Yeah, he's got to guard against being tentative from this point forward, though. He's got to still make the right reads, make the proper throws. I've seen guys in this league throw four interceptions in a game and win. He's got to understand. Put it behind you. Keep pressing forward. And now a big play to start off this drive as the shot downfield is complete. Now he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Chris Godwin, 47 yards. It's now 21 to nothing. Taken about seven yards deep. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. At their own 25-yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. To this point, the results have not been good. Two possessions, two turnovers. And that's obviously something that can't continue, but to go a little bit deeper on that one, some play calls now, not even necessarily to my best player, but to someone I can trust with the ball, try and get things settled down a little bit. That one, 28 yards on the ground. 27 yard line. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. On the ground, it's Cook. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, 
Their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. Here's another interception, the third of this first quarter. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. So that is three interceptions now in this first half, and you hate to ask the question, but yeah, let's be honest. We're thinking about it. Do you need looking for Evans, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Mike Hughes. Now he'll be marked down at the two-yard line. And that pick just sets him up beautifully right down near the goal line. I remember being in a defensive meeting back when I was in college, and our defensive coordinator says, we're going to call this beat. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Vikings are able to cut into that deficit. Well, since we don't have a rooting interest in this one, neither one of us wanted to see this one get out of hand too early. Here we are in the first quarter. That was an important response for them to score already down 21. And no return on this one. It's a fair catch. A signal four and take it. The Bucks take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling. Because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. Back to the ground, this time with Jones. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. On first down, Newman. He's going to take off with it. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Now, how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. Now a second down and six. Now a carry for Edwards Alaire. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And down to the 19-yard line. 23 yards the pick up there. One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating them up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying, way back when, when a back's having a great game, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, not get loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. At the 17-yard line. A pretty wild first quarter. 21-7, our score. Score, Buccaneers 21, Vikings 7. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. From the gun, Newman. He'll drop this underneath for Jones. And he'll be brought down at about the six-yard line. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. 
And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. And he gets halfway home from the four down to the two-yard line. And a nice job defensively to keep him out of the end zone. He's trying to get a second touchdown already in the first half. They had that one earlier, was bidding for a second. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. He, and he's into the end zone for the Tampa Bay touchdown. It's their quarterback scoring on the two-yard keeper. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. And he puts it through. Following the touchdown, here's Gay to kick it away. Taken about seven yards deep. And he'll just take a seat in the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. 25-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They've got to be a little shell-shocked. Down double digits at home in the playoffs. Still in the first half. They've got to turn things around quickly. Well, he's able to force his way through one man, but he can muster only about a yard on the play. Second down. One yard gain. Brings up second and nine. Now a shotgun snap as they look to throw. They've got his man complete. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Vikings. A big play there. 74 yards. And the Vikings are able to close the gap just a bit. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly run, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down. And I just remember as a player, I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers. That meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Let's take over first and ten at their own 25-yard line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days. Offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play. And that's how they got it done. And they got it for a touchdown last time. Let's see what happens here. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. He's brought down at the Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. Oh, but you talked about the need for them to establish the run early. They've been able to do that here in the first half. And that means that the whole offense has adopted that attitude and that persona. We're going to take care of this young quarterback. Let's all get together and run it and take the pressure off. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. Now after the false start, they need eight yards here on third down. Operating from the gun, Newman. In a heavy traffic and it's intercepted. He's picked off near his own 48. And they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. That was a really nice interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing zone. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes and go to the ball. first half and he's already thrown four picks and Brandon back in the good old days probably back before you were born if your starter threw four in the first half he might throw eight or more for the game because they weren't going to pull him out 
but nowadays the patient's level isn't quite there. He's got to make some real adjustments or the backup may see some time. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. He was and a lot of times, these plays, they either go for nothing or they go for big yardage. And here, they got to the outside, turned it upfield, and ended up getting a nice little gain out of it. On second down, a run with Edwards Alaire. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. The Bucks on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This time it's third and three. first down yardage before being taken down at midfield a third down gain of three yards and that'll be enough first down Buccaneers now this time he'll look to throw oh, the ball comes out on a hit but they'll say it's incomplete They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. They're targeting Godwin once more, this time complete. And he's finally out of bounds, but he's taken it all the way down to the eight. A big play that time for Tampa Bay. 42 yards. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. They'll run with Edwards Alaire. And the Bucs are going to have it first and goal as he'll take this down to about the three. Anthony Defensively, they must have been expecting a pass. They were in the dime look out there. I think maybe they were deciding to go with speed on the field rather than bulk. I'm with you a little bit surprising. But they wanted people getting to the ball as fast as possible. The lighter shift your defensive backs allow you that opportunity. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Two minutes to play here in this first half of the NFL playoffs. Coming up at the half, we remind you that we're going to do what we've done all year. We'll get you down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. Coach will have the lowdown of what's going on. And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Clyde edwards Lair with his second touchdown here in this first half. As the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. And his kick is good. Buccaneers 35. Vikings 14. After the touchdown, it's Gay to kick this one away. <laughs> Taken about seven yards deep. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. At their own 25-yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and ten. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. It'll be a gain of ten to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. Seemed like a couple sets of eyes were on the quarterback, so he decided, hey, I'm going to hand this off. Got a good gain out of it. And you know you need good blocking up front in order to gain yardage, but every one of these RPOs, if you do it right and they look the same, whether it's handed off inside or the quarterback keeps it, 
that allows you to fool the defense so often. And in this case, fooled him with the inside run. Back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Complete. Jefferson the target. And he'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That one good for 26 and a first down. First and 10 at the 16-yard line. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Flushed out right. He'll run it. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. Nice work to get 7 out of that, and it's second down. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. On second down, Cook. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts. As the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. A tenth carry in the game for Cook. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. This is first and goal and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. They'll run for the Cook. And this time he is in. Yes. Delman Cook with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Vikings are able to cut into that deficit. And the lead will be cut down to 14. Makes the score. Buccaneers 35. Vikings. Now Captain Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. And a fair catch signal for and taken successfully. The Bucks take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Flush to his right. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. Different pass rushes are designed for different things. Sometimes you want to keep the quarterback in the pocket. Sometimes you want him to flush. I don't know exactly how this one was designed, but they made sure they moved him to his right. He got out of the pocket. Unfortunately for him, he was hit as he tried to throw the ball, and that resulted in an incompletion. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing again. Newman. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. On first and 10, Newman. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. He was covered by Jeff Gladney. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. To throw again. Newman. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. A final shot before break. Newman. And nearly picked off there. Almost 
first intercepted. Instead, second down. Brings up second and ten. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. The final shot before break. Newman looking downfield for... And this is caught. And he's in for the touchdown. And the final play of the first half. The prayer is answered. How did they get that done? And they extend their lead. A little added cushion into the lockers. What a way to finish. Tremendous play. That's momentum that they carry in with them. And they convert it and bring it back out to start the third quarter. So we come upon halftime here in this NFC wild card matchup. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. One of these two teams about to play their final half of the season as we're back at it in this NFC wild card bout. Taken about seven yards deep. Vikings now to start their next drive. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that one pass option. You get the sense the next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? Now a quick throw into the hands of Jefferson. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. off so they decline it as that will bring up fourth and i know that yardage and field position are keys to any game played but you've got to consider downs when you're talking about penalties oh, and they wisely did not take that one and made it fourth down o'donnell he's on to punt as he gets this one away A 42 yard punt, three on the return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. From the gun, Newman. They'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. First catch of this wild card game for a thousand yard receiver in the regular season. He's got a first down, too. They'll let the QB keep it here off the option. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. Looking to throw on second down. Newman. Blitz coming and down he goes. Daniil Hunter. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big. But sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, you know, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? typically a blitz and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz if you have the blitz call and you still cover the screen that allows your blitzers to get there he lost the football it's loose well, offensively lucky they were able to keep the football but now fourth down so they'll have to boot it away i do think though they're going to look at this as a positive one they recovered the fumble so they retained possession but two being able to punt it 
change of field position for them. Imagine if that turnover takes place there. Now your defense has to go onto the field and try and hold. Instead, they get a little breathing room. At their own 13-yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't seen before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so someone well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Five yards, now it's third and five. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Out of the gun now on third down. He's going to fire. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. 20, 10, touchdown. Vikings are able to close the gap just a bit. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and ten. The drive will begin with a run by Edwards Hilaire. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Here's Edwards Hilaire. Four yards the pick up, first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Jet sweep, this is Godwin. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there, all 11 guys on defense. Diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Second and six. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. Off the play fake. Newman. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked by Jeff Gladney. and it turned into a floater. And defensively, this is a dream. He could have fair caught that one. That was way too easy. The 49-yard line. Now a play fake here on first down. Completes it to the fullback hand. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. I think the good offensive coordinators in the league now are looking at the fullback position and finding the right guys to hide in that spot and increase their passing game, as we just saw there. How about the run after catch? Racked him. Well, yeah, whether it's a true fullback, a tight end, you put in the fullback spot, you know they're going to be tough to bring down if you can get them the football in the passing game. It's a pickup of three. 
Brings up second and seven. Here's a second and seven. Well, going for Jefferson downfield. He's got his man. And it's taken in for a freaking touchdown. Justin Jefferson. 35 yards. And the interception by the Vikings D leads to a touchdown. Extra point up and good by Kenton Zero. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. Now Kenton Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. Take over first and ten at their own 25-yard line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And their lead cut in half by that touchdown a moment ago. They are up seven as they begin this drive first and ten. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves them with two to go on second down. Here's a second and two now from the 33. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going to the bottom pitch. He's trying to break his way through all that traffic and people want to put a little contact on it. Really well done. Brings up third and inches. Edwards Alaire will try to run for it. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down, at least at first glance, as they spot the football just beyond the marker. They find a way to convert on third and inches. Tampa Bay. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. And they'll try to run the option here. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone that's the same agility, who can dance with him, run with him, and try and keep him in the pocket. Yeah, that'll be especially critical here as we come down the stretch in the fourth. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he's got it across the midfield strike and into Viking territory. He's Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. The Bucks on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and four. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. And the Buccaneer first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the shotgun, a give to Jones. And he's taken down inside the 30. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucks have a first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there, and on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing, in a situation when they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it 
or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. 12 more yards there and another first down. Well, as we've learned over the years, just because a guy plays left tackle doesn't mean he doesn't have run blocking abilities. And we just saw it there. Controlled the line of scrimmage, created a big game. That's kind of a bonus. He's there to protect that high value that you have back under center, but he creates space in the run game. Yeah, not only can he dance, he can mash, too. He's brought down at the 15 yard Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. and nine. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. The Bucks on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This time they face a third and two. He may try to run for this. But he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. He'll wind up getting two there as he does it himself and picks up the first. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll try to run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. Now from the seven, here's second and goal. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. Absolutely nothing out of that sneak, and now it's fourth down. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Does it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on, and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. him a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, blood a little time off the clock, put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet, but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender, you go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us. They'll try and start this drive in the air. back earlier in the game when he threw his second interception. I mean, who would have thought a quarterback of his caliber picked now five times? It's beyond stunning to me because we're used to that with maybe a quarterback with less experience or less talent. But a quarterback of his caliber? I can't believe what we've just seen. Absolutely. If you would have told me this coming into the ball game, I would have said never. Not in a million years, but here we go. Two, yards. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. 
ball carrier. The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? You just give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. On third down, here's Edwards Hilaire. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. The Vikings get a signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And Gay knocks this one through. And that will stretch the lead up to 13. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything counts trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But it's still eight up time, got points. So if it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Now, last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this. And this will be caught at the 30. And he is finally out of bounds all the way down at the 30. It's a big one there for the Vikings. 45 yards. So the big play has them all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. He's going to let it fly. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Carlton Davis picks it. Both defenses have had their struggles, but they've been good enough to get them this lead and another nice play there to help preserve the lead. It's been a game of punch-counter-punch, punch, hasn't it? All throughout. But this time, the big swing was taken, and it didn't land. Nice play by them on defense. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. Tonight's final score. And I know it's hard to find solace on one side when the season ends, no matter where it ends, but especially in the playoffs because there's all that build up to the moment. But I would imagine the post-game locker room speech, it'll have a pretty positive spin. It should. They've, they've made a heck of a run to get to the playoffs and have that chance to, to advance, even though they didn't. But you're right about how much it's going to hurt because when you work that hard to get this far, it hurts just a little bit more. No matter when your season ends, it's a downer. But in this case, even more so because you had your eyes on the big prize, which was the Lombardi Trophy. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From Minneapolis, good night, everybody.